Hello students, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishwash. I welcome you all in my channel Chemistry, the Mystery of Molecules. Today's topic of discussion is rubatum oxidation. This is a very interesting reaction you can see here. So we shall discuss today about the reaction mechanism and examples with one MCQ. So before going to details, the MCQ is in front of you. What is the major product of this reaction? So I request you student, please look at the problem carefully. Pause the video, try by yourself and whatever answer you get, please write in the comment box with at least few words to explain your answer. And don't worry, at the end of this discussion, you will get the right answer with explanation. So now let's go to the main topic. That is what is this rubatum oxidation? This is actually a chemical reaction. You can consider the epoxidation or augments. Actually, this is the epoxidation, but what ultimately happens a silyl enol ether converted or oxidized into corresponding alpha hydroxy ketone okay so this alpha hydroxy ketone is produced by this oxidation using metachlorobarbenzoic acid now let's learn about how the reaction happens i mean the reaction mechanism this mcpba mediated epoxidation of alkene is also known as prelisive epoxidation i've already discussed dedicated lecture on this epoxidation you may visit for better understanding now, in short, if I say this is actually, remember student, the name, this is actually electrophilic epoxidation. So question, who is electrophile? In this case, the MCPBA is the electrophile. Okay. And who is the nucleus, means electron rich or nucleophile? This alkene here is the nucleophile. Now a simple question, if you compare a simple alkene versus the silyl enol ether, who is more reactive? Obviously student, the silyl enol ether is more reactive, why? Because the silyl enol ether has a canonical form, means it can come here and it can open and ultimately it will produce the canonical form that is the, the negative charge is in the carbon and you can see this OSI Me3 the oxygen is having the positive charge rest of the parts are everything same so from this thing we can understand that this alkene or double bond is actually a electron rich double bond that's why this mcpba mediated epoxidation happens smoothly and that's why you can see this rubatum oxidation is an useful high yielding chemical reaction between silylone ether and peroxy acid so just i guess you have understood why what happens so simply the first step is the epoxidation of alkene as it is this is the epoxide epoxide and other substituents are the same now second step is treatment with acid and by the way student remember epoxides are three member ring and they are strained and this epoxide ring opening could be achieved under three condition means acidic neutral or you can consider lewis acidic or anion means basic or anionic now in this case we have used acid so what is expected that the oxygen atom of the epoxide molecule will act as a base we know oxygen is a hard uh, base by the way you can say that sir this there is an oxygen too it can as yes student this is uh, there is an oxygen so it can also protonate but that do not have any significant fate so what will happen in this case these lone pair will be given to this proton and it will be protonated so this is like this it means protonated epoxide you can consider now the formal positive charge is on the oxygen atom which is an electronegative atom so that's why this is not stable so there are two chance chance number a that this bond will open and it will produce a tertiary carbocation i believe it's stable significantly stable but there is an another option that is opening of this bond then the positive charge will come at here this is as although it's secondary but it has a significantly high stabilization how so this is the carbocation formation fine it has a canonical form i should write in this way what will happen in this case this lone pair of electron given here and in this way this is this conjugation is observed and this is you may consider like an oxonium type intermediate this is highly stable because every atom is octet filled this was a six electron species but in this canonical form every atom having electron means octet filled so that's how you can say that it is stable now in the next step 
just try to understand that silicon oxygen bond is very stable because of partial double bond character i've already discussed this thing previously in this enolate or silyl enol ether generation videos so in the next step now you can see that this bond is not that much stable like previously it was because the oxygen is carrying a formal positive charge on it means this bond is not that much stable consequently what you can expect that the lone pair on these oxygen atom can do a inter intramolecular attack type on this silicon center and later on this bond will open so in this way what it will produce these alpha part will be ome why because previously there was a oh but after nucleophilic attack this oh oxygen will have a positive charge so it will release the proton so in this way h plus will be released and molecule will be neutral so in this way what it will produce this is an another silyl ether okay so this is another silyl ether or you can say protected alcohol the same thing also and this how this silyl ether could be broken one is acid mediated one is alkali or base mediated but what i like the most that is fluoride mediated because like oxygen silicon bond fluoride silicon bond is also very strong because both belongs to same row that is second row element and fluorine also have lone pair of electron which could be donated to the vacant d orbital i repeat energetically accessible vacant d orbital of silicon such that it can break the silicon oxygen bond and in this way what it will get alpha hydroxy ketone or acyl ion so by the way i've already discussed acyl ion ester condensation so we may visit for better understanding so this is also a silicon ether which is hydrolyzed corresponding alpha hydroxy ketone so this is the mechanism now let's discuss some examples so in short this tms means trimethyl silyl so this will be oxidized using mcpba this oxidation is very facile so in this way what it will ultimately result this alpha hydroxy ketone just we have discussed the mechanism now you can see the substrate scope means different react different category or type of substrate for example this is this 60, 85, 72, 84, 64, 77. So lots of differently functionalized or variety of substrate could be converted into corresponding product means this alpha hydroxy ketone using this rubotom oxidation. So this is the beauty of this region. It's a mild reaction condition. Why I'm saying mild? Just look at the reaction temperature, zero degree centigrade to RT and solvent DCM or hexanes. It's a very mild but selective oxidation reaction we shall learn few examples later on such that you will be convinced that it's really a very good reaction selective reaction now second this is actually a diene attached to si ome3 okay why i'm saying diene so this part is actually diene in case of dill solder reaction i guess you have observed many such kind of examples now what happens here in this case mcpba one equivalent now student a question why one equivalent is written because previously no need stoichiometric it's fine but here two double bonds are there so if it is given such that you can get confused now question that one equivalent mcpba two bonds are there one is this bond number one and another this bond number two which will be epoxidized now, as I told some time before that MCPBA is a electron deficient molecule and this reaction is a electrophilic epoxidation reaction. So that double bond will be selectively oxidized which is electron rich. And as I told that this silyl ether can attached alkene is more electron rich. I have shown the resonance. So that's how it is more reactive and you can see the resonance structure here also okay so in this way this double bond will open and negative charge will come here so this is a simple thing the double bonds next carbon at means is double bonds one double bonds one part is oxygen attached another part is without oxygen so that part will be attached to the hydroxyl so here you can see the hydroxyl group will be attached selectively because of the resonance this center this center is more electron rich compared to other so that's why reaction is expected to happen here now let's discuss the another example use of other oxidant 
I shall explain slowly. Just look at the first step, student. This first step is nothing but silyl enol ether formation. Now there is a difference. This LDA TMSCL, I guess you have uh, seen many times. I have already made three lectures on this. Now what about this triethyl silen OTF means triflet? Why? This has very unique thing because this O this TF triflet OTF. This is a very good living group. That's why what you can expect initially these molecule can attack since it's a very good living group and later on triethylamine act as a base and ultimately produce this silicon enolithar derivative. I've already discussed this thing dedicatedly in this enolithar preparation in presence of weak base which resulted generally thermodynamic controlled enolate. Please visit for better understanding. So in this way what it will get we will get this silyl enol ether which is the main reactant for this oxidation. So in this case either this MCPBA or DMDO anything could be used because if you look at the structure of this MCPBA so this is metachloroparbenzoic acid means it also has a peroxy linkage that is responsible because the oxidation number of this peroxy linkage is minus 1 minus 1 and similar thing this acetone peroxide this is also minus 1 minus 1. So from chemical point of view both are same. So that's how they are doing the same job and in this case no acid is given. So how this reaction happening? What is the fate of MCPBA? These MCPBA after oxidation it convert into metachlorobenzoic acid. So this is a weaker acid that's how the, it's playing the role of acid right now. Okay. Now and third tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride to deprotect the silicon ether fine so in this way this group is obtained now let's come to the another example this is actually student stereoselective just look at very carefully so this part will be oxidized otms silicon protected in all it now this is mcpba Oxidant DCM is solvent C minus 20 degree centigrade. Just look at how much selective this reaction is. But in this case, we are getting a particular stereoisomer. Although here the reagents are not chiral. Question how and why this is happened. Remember, student, this metachloroparbenzoic acid has selectivity. It prefers to bind on the site where hydroxyl group is there, but it prefers to bind in the opposite side where protected group is there means OR like that similar thing is there OR there is no OH so consequently what happens that these part these you may consider diol protected by acetone is below side consequently this MCPBA will prefer to oxidize this double bond from the top side opposite so that's why we get this product means selectively and student by the way please remember one statement that asymmetry at the alpha to carbonyl is very important and difficult to why because tautomerism tautomerism means keto enol tautomerism and that's why that makes the thing difficult by the way there is an another topic peptide racemization and tautomerism because the alpha carbon of the carboxylic acid is the mainly stereocenter on peptide and because of this tautomerism sometimes this studio uh, this asymmetry is lost and that creates lots of problem by they have already discussed a dedicated lecture on pe peptide racemization and tautomerism you may visit for better understanding now why how this happens just to give you an example that what can happen this is the OH and it undergoes tautomerism means this is this is OH this is OH and race things are same okay now just look at this is sp2 hybridized carbon planar so stereochem means asymmetry is lost so that's why the tautomerism is a big culprit here but why this stereochemistry is obtained because the selectivity of this mcpba which prefers the opposite side where this ether group is actually this is the ether derivative but overall if you consider this is a protected diol. Now, let's discuss another example of stereoselective oxidation. 
in this case mcpb oxidizes selectively this with this two questions are there first of all why not the other because it is not that much electron rich like this one okay this is and second why this is down the question question first one you can understand because of conjugation this double one is electron rich second second is if you look at this molecule little carefully student this part is on the top side so this ring is in the top side so it creates the bulkness whereas if you think from the bottom there is no such kind of bulkness so that's why the reaction happens from the bottom side so you get here now student another case here also a tms group is there o tms trimethylsilyl but this is a simple alcohol protection here no double bond is there attached to this tms directly so that's why you can say there is no alkene which can be oxidized similarly this part okay so that's why the selective reaction happens in this side now i guess you have understood why particular stereochemistry obtain instead of means although the reagents are not chiral second why this reaction is much more selective for particular cc bond in this case student just one answer for the first question the reagents are not chiral it's true the reagents are not chiral but the molecule itself is chiral that's why it prefers a particular stereoisomer so that's why a particular stereoisomer is produced preferentially now so in conclusion what you have learned today this rubidium oxidation is a kind of electrophilic epoxidation reaction par acid acts as the electrophilic reagent and it produces the alpha hydroxy ketone silicon deprotection of o si me3 result is done by either fluoride acid or base and finally the epoxides are strained three member ring so they could be opened up either by acid base or neutral which is actually a lewis acidic condition i've already discussed at educated lecture you may visit for better understanding so let's come back to the mcq so if you look at this reagent student this is a very interesting reagent for a concept that is electrophilic epoxidation i know this concept is little new to you this is electrophilic epoxidation and in this case actually this is you may consider equivalent to f plus although it is very difficult to generate f plus but it chemical reactivity is similar to f plus means you can consider this this carbon atom can push and it can attack and it can leave so the leaving group is neutral here so that is the driving force and by the way i have already uploaded many lectures on this electrophilic fluorination so you may visit for better understanding now so first point we have understood that this is electrophilic fluorination second point which position this fluorine will get attached the answer is this position okay and so the actual answer for this question is option c now question why this position if you look at the reaction here just this this is a ome just consider this beta naphthols methyl ether so this is beta position so now it has a canonical form means it pushes it opens only this direction so from this canonical form you can say that the negative charge density is more on this position okay so that's why nucleophilic attack could be done from this position so that side here happened second thing this oxygen cannot directly come in conjugation with the other double bond this you can see so consequently reaction will happen there selectively and reaction condition is also very much mild just you can see 23 degree centigrade and 48 degree 8 hour so you may consider this is nothing but a rt room temperature reaction so that's how this product will be produced now this is the end of the discussion i believe this video may be useful please write your opinion in the comment box and if possible please visit my another channel climate and chemistry where i upload global warming and climate change related videos thanks for watching stay happy